if you're new here, my name's Eli and I'm a marine biologist. And the reason I'm making this video today in particular is because I've had some extensive experience related to writing personal statements. Over the past year, I spent 10 months working with an individual coach to help me perfect my skills in personal statement writing. And the reason I did this was to make sure that I had a perfect personal statement going into my Fulbright, which is a nationally competitive scholarship that I ended up actually achieving. And during this time, I also ended up achieving four different scholarships that helped me get $3,000 in research funding. So now I've taken all of that knowledge and skills that I have gained from working with an individual coach over a period of 10 months to take on clients and review their personal statements. So as I've been looking at all of these personal statements of my clients, I have started to really get a grasp on what really holds you back in writing a successful personal statement. So the very first thing and probably the easiest thing to do to improve your personal statement or just make sure that it's not going to be unoriginal is to avoid these specific words and phrases. And the very first one is I've always been passionate about. This is probably one of the most common phrases I've ever seen in any personal statement, and I myself was guilty of including this as well, but it is just, it's very cliche and it's not original. This statement could be improved so much more by instead showing an actual example to exemplify your passion. So don't say I'm passionate, prove you're passionate by showing something that you've done. So the second word slash phrase I would really try to avoid and it is almost equivalently as cliche as passion is love <laughs> or I've always loved. This is a statement that really isn't that descriptive. And instead of saying that you love something, show that you love it by providing an actual example of something that exemplifies that you really are into whatever you're talking about. Another phrase that you should try to avoid is ever since. So ever since I was a child, ever since I was whatever. This also tends to be a pretty cliche phrase and also it's not very specific. You can say, ever since I was a child, I have loved marine biology, but ever since you were a child, so much has changed during that time, and that is also not a very specific time frame that you're giving. So instead, you can say something like, when I was 13, my interest for marine biology began and go into why it began, how it began, give the whole context. It's much more useful to provide specific experiences as opposed to larger trends over time. Another specific word you should try to avoid is very. This just ends up being unnecessary and kind of fluffs up your personal statement. Instead of using very, try to either just leave out the word or use something more descriptive to emphasize whatever you're trying to say. So for example, instead of, I was very shocked at what I saw, you could say, I was shocked at what I saw, or you could be more descriptive and say, the scene in front of me was astounding. This is much more direct language and it's also much more descriptive. It gives the reader a much more in-depth view of what the experience was like. So the next thing you should definitely try to avoid within a personal statement is any type of jargon related to your field. Now this is definitely arguable because in some cases it might be necessary or it might be appropriate. However, usually a personal statement, it's not really necessary to include very specific details like that. That usually is more appropriate to a different part of an application, something more along the lines of a CV or something more specified for the field. A personal statement is more so about you, the lessons that you have learned, and also how you have been shaped by your experiences. Not so much the very specific things that you have been exposed to. But that being said, if something very specific in particular is very important to whatever you're applying to, then it might be appropriate to use something that is not going to be understood by a non-expert. And a tip to make sure that you don't have any unnecessary jargon in your personal statement is to give it to a friend that is definitely a non-expert and just have them read through it and ask them, is there anything that they didn't understand or anything that you should clarify? If they don't understand, 
on any particular term or a series of terms, then think about changing it. Think about focusing on broader concepts than the nitty gritty specifics of what you are trying to say. Another thing you should definitely avoid doing is assuming that a reader is going to understand a reference. So a specific reference that isn't common knowledge, like a specific organization or a book, a movie, or something along those lines. If you are making a reference to it or even a company or organization that you've specifically worked with, make sure the reader understands what that is or else they're not going to understand the whole context of what you're trying to say. I, I've seen this in a few personal statements that I've written and I don't follow at all what the reader is trying to say if they are referencing a book that I should know about but I don't know about or they're referencing some kind of it's supposed to be popular, but I don't know what it is. It's always safer to give some context of what your reference actually is. This would be another case where it would be helpful to give your paper to a friend that is a non-expert or wouldn't be familiar with some of the references you're putting in there and make sure that they understand exactly the references that you are putting in your paper. So another tip I have, and probably the most valuable part of this entire video, is this sentence structure that you should try to include as much as possible within your personal statement. And that is in the first part of the sentence, including a concrete skill, role, or experience. And in the second part of the sentence, including your interpretation of whatever that is. So often I see people just including that first part of the sentence, like it's a CV and it's just like the equivalent experience of a reviewer looking at your CV and it doesn't make you stand out at all. If you are just listing bullet points in a paragraph form, you might as well have just submitted a CV. And if you're doing that, you are not distinguishing yourself from other competitors in this personal statement. You're not really showing who you are. So make sure to try to incorporate that sentence structure as much as possible. Your skill, experience, role, followed by your interpretation. Your interpretation is the most important part of a personal statement because when a reviewer is looking at this, they want to understand who you are and what led you to be who you are today. So I wanted to include an example of transforming a fluff sentence into one of these power statements, I'll call them. And so for example, I'll read this off my computer. Here is an example of fluff. So from my experience, I can attest that having encouraging mentors is imperative to the success of entrepreneurs. So this sounds like a pretty solid statement, although I would consider it fluff because it doesn't really tell me anything about what this, this writer is actually thinking, experiencing, what they've learned, any of that. And it also doesn't tell me any concrete skills or experiences or roles that this person has had. So this would be an example of a power statement. <laughs> John Smith played a pivotal role in my entrepreneurial journey in 2017, showing me the unparalleled value of mentorship as a budding entrepreneur. So very different sentences with the same intention, except the second sentence had much more details and also brought the attention to me. These, the first sentence sounds like it could have been written by anyone, but the second sentence really emphasizes that these were my experiences, my roles, and also what those meant to me, how they impacted me. So if you guys have any more questions related to personal statements, definitely shoot me a comment below or feel free to reach out to me on any of my social medias. Or if you're interested in the service that I offer on Fiverr at the moment, I'm eventually gonna have a website, but I do offer personal statement reviewing services on Fiverr and I also review people's CVs and resumes. So if you're interested in any of that, then definitely check it out in the links below. But otherwise, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.